Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over how I set up this port -a tool line boring tool for the Volkswagen Type 1 engines. This is an old used setup. Fairly simple in its design really. But I'll show you how I set up the cutters today, how I put everything up in the block. I torque the big six nuts those two nuts in the rear and the three nuts in the front of the case other people that do line boring might have different ways they go about it but in the instructions it only calls out to torque up the big six but I figure those other five aren't gonna hurt alright I'll set the camera up get back to it before I get started I do want to go over a few things with this being that I did buy a couple used kits off of eBay, they were missing a few things. One was the instructions. I was able to find these online and print them out. Got pretty lucky there. Pretty simple, really. Hardest part, uh, or the most time-consuming part, is setting up the cutters. Even came with a uh, picture sheet that corresponds with the instructions. A little hard to see, but gets the job done. Uh, the other real main thing that was missing was this micrometer for setting up your cutters. So I cut up a micrometer, got the 3D printer out, made my own. And I'll show you how that works when I'm uh, setting everything up. This is the older of the two versions that Portatool offered. The earlier version has this hydraulic feed unit. The later style was actually built right into this rear bushing. But this works uh, quite well actually. This little knob here engages and disengages the hydraulic feed. It just takes 30 weight oil. Take out these two grub screws. Make sure it's all the way full. Work the air out and that's good to go. That attaches to the back of the case with this bracket right here, I did notice that there was some flex in this shaft. So to combat that, I put my vise right around this, just lightly tighten it up to hold everything steady. This bolts, or gets attached right to the back of the boring bar. This is the nose side that comes out where your uh, crank pulley would be, but it's the same design on the, on the bottom side. And then that's what pulls this thing in and out. Pretty sweet little setup. Also for torquing, if any of you have not yet picked one of these up from Harbor Freight, I would highly recommend it. They're fairly inexpensive, just hooks right up to your breaker bar or your ratchet. You can preset the torque you want to go to, it'll start beeping when it uh, gets up to that torque. It also shows your highest torque that you've gone up to. Uh, they work really nice, so if anybody's looking for something like that, they work really well. Alrighty, I'll start getting this thing set up. Okay, so setting up these cutters through a little bit of trial and error on uh, running through a different case, I found out that uh, what my desired setting, so for second over, Case size 2.599 to 2.5998. So I'm going to cut this sucker 10 thou under that so that way I can work my way up to that size. And from what I've read, you want to have a thou and a half to two thou of bearing crush. So I measured the outside diameter of the bearings here. They're anywhere from 2.6009 all the way down to 2.5997. So the number three bearing, if I ran it right up to that case size in the book, then it would not have the right amount of crush. And that all gets measured afterwards with the dial bore indicator once everything's uh, tightened up with the bearings in there. Uh, so I'm going to be setting this. 10 thou under, so I'll get my desired setting. A 
which will be 2.589. And with a little bit of trial and error I found with my micrometer, I'm going to then divide that by 2. That comes out to 1.2945. Then I will subtract 0.4625. That comes out with 832 thousandths. So on the micrometer here, there's 825. 830, 832. Let's see if I can get the camera right here. So, I set these up for consistency. I have this slightly snug to where I can barely rotate it. And even in the instructions, it tells you to figure out the highest point. So I'll have to reset that. But get that thing, the cutter put out all the way to the micrometer there, snug it up. And you don't want to drag the mic or the uh, bit across the micrometer because that can damage the surface. You're basically wanting to find the highest point on the cutter. This is why I was saying this is the most time-consuming part of this whole deal. And basically, I'm just running this thing back and forth and getting the highest reading. And then once I get it to its highest reading, I'll rotate this Allen key just to snug it up so that way this can't spin by hand. And then once this is uh, tightened down, then I will set the micrometer, push the cut her out to the tip of the micrometer, tighten it up, back this sucker off, bring it down till it clicks, double check my measurements with the 0.832, whatever your desired setting is going to be. And then from there on out, do the rest of the cutters, make sure that they're all the same. And then uh, next up comes assembly of the cutters onto the boring bar. All right, so all the cutters are set. And they are all set to be ten thousandths under the second oversize. Now this is the boring bar here. And on the boring bar itself you have uh, two markings. L for late, E for early. That's your 36 and 40 horse uh, cases. Late is everything after. And you have a designated spot for all the cutters except for the small bearing up front. Now per the instructions it says to have this bar laid out on a bench like this and install the cutters so that way this line is to the immediate right of the cutter body with the cutting surface facing away. So they will be going on the bar like this and all the cutters will be in line with these two grub screws. Over on this other engine half here, block half, we have a boring bar sitting in there just for visual purposes. Two bushings already in the case to kind of hold it. And that's how it'll look. You get drawn through the case and cut some material away. Now this block I'm using here, it's obviously seen some better days. 
it has a lot of corrosion. I ran a, uh, a boring bar at first over and you can see the corrosion in the main bearing saddle. Uh, I will not be using this block, it's mostly just used for setting up uh, the boring bar and possibly for setting up a, uh, a tool for boring these out for bigger pistons or jugs I should say. So I'll set this on the stand and uh, clamp all these cutters on there and we'll get to it. All right, so there's the cutters on the bar. This cutter you want to make sure is very tight because when you go to hit the bushings out of the case, this uh, cut cutter holder will be what drives the rear bushing out of the case, and that's pretty snug. So, got to make sure that's tight. It's covering the L, but you can see the the groove is right to the right of the cutter. This one's covering the E. And there's a line right next to that. So somebody did uh, some interesting work on these bushings. I'm not sure if they had a, a Volkswagen engine shop or what, but they ended up putting these uh, grub screws, which the only thing that I can think what these are for is so that way you can tighten these down to be able to knock these bushings out instead of relying on that uh, aft cutter. They also put these slits in here. I'm not sure what those are for. The front uh, bushing that goes up by the pulley, they also threaded some holes and there, it, did, it did come with some small bolts. Not sure what that would be for. These bushings, they have had a hole drilled, uh, which I use these ones just because it's a lot easier to dump some oil down the hole for lubricating the boring bar versus oiling the bar then putting it in the bushings and going at it. So, I'll start putting the uh, putting it together in this case. So, you start from the back of the block. 
I always have the cutters sitting at the top and you just want to be careful going through. You don't want to be beating up your bearing saddles. There's that. So that's where this part of the tool comes into play. This might be considered slightly primitive, but hey, you know what? Gets the job done. So with that bushing, I put the oiling hole right on the top. And this little uh, piece right here works as a slide hammer. So you just go over the uh, boring bar shaft and tap it in till it's flush I'll put that in a little bit more once I have the back seated And one thing that I do when I'm putting this bushing in is I'll rotate the shaft. That way I can make sure that everything's kind of uh, going where it needs to be. Make sure there's no binding. tight spots, so that's good. This piece is the bracket that holds on the hydraulic feed assembly. This goes right on the back of the bill housing. Doesn't matter if you have it in this hole or this hole, either of them work. As this little spacer goes in between the lip of the bell housing and this bracket, so that way it doesn't bind one way or the other. Now that's going to be pulling the bar through the case, so when you set this up, you're going to want this to be all the way forward, or towards the bell housing I should say. That way when it spins, it turns in and pulls towards you. One thing that the instructions said about this hydraulic feed is to loosen this knob up, 
and pull this thing in and out if you have any chattering occurring. Just to work any of the air bubbles out. I haven't used this in about a month, so probably wouldn't hurt, but that's what the instructions tell you to do. So for a little bit of added rigidity, that's how I put the hydraulic feed unit in the vise, just slightly snug it up, and that keeps anything from jumping around. And again, always make sure when you're first setting this thing up to keep this loose, make sure that there's no binding going on. So there you can see where the cutters are, most of them at least. The other one's tucked back. Anyhow, you get the point on that. Now for lubrication, it's a good old WD-40, gives a nice finish. One thing, uh, another thing this kit did not have was there was an adapter that went in the end of this boring bar. And I basically uh, took a 3 8 uh, to quarter inch adapter and it fit the end of the boring bar nice. It's barely smaller. And then I just ground a little flat spot in it for the grub screw. It did come with this uh, little wobbly piece that goes into the drill. You do need to use a half inch drive, uh, lower RPM drill. I believe, uh, let's see what it says, the recommended 700 to 1000 RPM. And this is an 850 RPM, so I run this sucker wide open throttle. Works pretty well. All right, I'm gonna move this camera around, get you at a different angle. Okay, I'll get this drill hooked up. Oil the bushings and earn pass through this.
regular motor oil in the bushings. The hydraulic feed is disengaged at this moment. Just going to run this through to oil the shaft some. Tighten up this knob to engage the hydraulic feed. And let her fly. I usually run three passes through the block just in case there's any imperfections or anything needs to be cleaned up. So here we go. Try to keep this Allen screw up at the top, so that way when the cutters are passing through the case, if anything, it will go right across the split line of the case to not damage any of the bearing surfaces, although I highly doubt a little scratch across the face is gonna cause any issues on your oiling or oil pressure. Deep enough one surely will. But a small scratch probably won't hurt anything. Now probably best to go through and blow all the chips out of the case, but being a test block and we don't want to make a hour long video, this will suffice. All right, pass number two. Now I run this through until the cutter starts poking out of this main bearing saddle. Now you definitely don't want to just keep going because it would probably pull that bushing right out of the back side of the case. Alright, I'm going to pull, uh, pull this drill off and get the camera set up at a different angle. So one thing I would like to mention before I forget, whenever you adjust these cutters, you want to make sure to remember that if you're adjusting that cutter one thousandths, more than your original setting it will actually take out two thousandths maybe even a little bit more because it's having to spin around that circle uh, so if you have it one thou on one side it'll make sure to take one thou out on the other so the next step in this process I took the hydraulic feed off and the drill off is to remove the bushings so it says to use a brass hammer or rubber mallet I'll use this trusty old guy Basically, you're going to be knocking on this part of the boring bar to knock this bushing out. And then once this bushing's out, I'll do the opposite tap on this side to knock this bushing out. Then I'll be pulling the uh, boring bar out of the case.
And this is why you want that rear uh, cutter to be tighter than heck, because it's a bitch going through here and tightening up that Allen key when it starts slipping on you. And I hold a little bit of pressure out this way, just to keep things from bouncing around. Nice having them in line so you know where the cutter's at so you can keep the cutters on the high side of the uh, bearing, bearing saddles I should say. I'll go blow this case out and hit it with some brake clean and we'll move on to the next step. All the air compressors building up some air, another sweet little tool that I've come across. Uh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these tools by any means, but this tool works awesome. It's called a short, uh, Sure Shot. Basically, fill it up with uh, brake clean, or you could use gasoline or whatever else, some kind of solvent. And uh, you put some air pressure to it, and man, saves you some money from buying can after can of brake clean for cleaning up your parts. Alright. So, the case. Just blew it out with some brake clean. Those boring saddle or uh, bearing saddles look pretty nice. So the next step that I would go about whenever I do something like this is I go through with a dial bore indicator. Uh, these are not any fancy name brand. Uh, they are eBay cheap specials. They get the job done. In my opinion, uh, if you're using a a decent quality tool. I would call these pretty decent for what they are. And you use the same tools over and over again. You should be able to get repeatable results. I believe these are made in China. Nobody likes made in China, but gets the job done. So I would measure my results with this. Basically go through the case and uh, mark out each bearing saddle and then I would determine what I need to do to uh, get it up to the right size and readjust the cutters. Uh, I can go over that in a different video if you guys would like. This was just kind of to give you guys an overview of how I set up this old line bore uh, tool. As you can see, it does a pretty nice job. So, if you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and uh, leave it below and 